Hi, everyone. Before I get started, I just want to say that I am very thankful and grateful for being here today. I have a few questions, questions that I ask myself all the time. Do you think society sees you as an individual? Or do you think society views you as a member of a group? Well, I finally answered that question for myself. As a black female, I believe that society sees me as someone I may look similar to. Why? I hear comments like, do you eat fried chicken? Do you wear weave? Or do you live in an apartment? Why are these offensive? Because there's a stereotype among all black people that we all eat fried chicken. Do you wear weave? Well, there's a stigma around black women wearing weave. Do you live in an apartment? That's what gets me the most. I live in Boston, but I go to school in Whalen. It's not the question that they ask, it's the way how they say it, as if they're pitying me if I live in an apartment or not. That's what brought me here today. These comments and questions are called microaggressions. They're unintended and sometimes unintentional, intentional discriminations. This is what brought me here today. When I first started going to Happy Hollow, I hated it. I used to go to my mom saying, why did you bring me here? I hate those people, I hate those kids, those kids are so babyish. Without even realizing it myself, I was a microaggressor. And what I meant by those kids, I meant by those white kids. Why? Because I knew I was different and I hated it. My mom told me to give it until a year to decide if I wanted to stay at Wayland or not. During that year, I realized that color, age didn't really matter and I learned to love those kids by them being themselves individually. Going into middle school, that's when everything changed. That's where we all started figuring out what cliques we belonged to, who were the cool kids, who weren't the cool kids. And I was struggling with accepting my own culture. Do I stick more with the black kids? Do I hang out with the white kids? And during that process, I started isolating myself from my white friends and I started hanging out with people that looked more like me. Going into high school, I was more independent. I really was friends with anybody. Then one day, this black boy comes to me and he says, Naya, I think I was born in the wrong body. And when he said that, I was like, okay, explain to me why. He was like, no, I mean, I think I was born in the wrong skin color. And I said, what do you mean you were born in the wrong skin color? He said, I think I was meant to be white. He was like, I'm not like you guys. And when he said that, that made me angry because I'm like, what do you mean you're not supposed to be like you guys? And what he was referring to was that he wasn't meant to be like the rest of the black people because he was more white. That summer, I held a grudge against him because I didn't understand how anyone can say they weren't meant to be a color. During that summer, I went to Puerto Rico with my best friends, without our parents. And while we were there, me and another girl, who are the darker ones out of the group, we would get made fun of for being the darker ones. They would say, oh, you're charcoal, or we can't see you in the dark. And even though it seems funny, there's always a time when that one friend in a group that always steps over the line. And that friend always did. It was, to, it was to the point where one of my best friends didn't even like coming outside because she was afraid of getting darker. That's where I came up with this idea. I, too, am Harvard. I adapted it from black Harvard students who used to talk about being black at a white school, a predominantly white school. And I thought about it, what town can I make a difference in? What town needs a change? What town needs something to happen? And I thought of Wayland because this is a perfect town to make a change in. So I came up with an idea, I too am Wayland. And I wanna say thank you for everyone who participated. Jackson, Thomas Leakey, and Sophia for putting in their song in my video. Thank you. Say
blue collar with just a few dollars Or if you got a new car and a huge pile of cash singing ooh la la Or if you pray to Allah or you come home to two fathers Got the world pushing you farther into desperation but Discrimination keeps driving you by the wondering who follow you to the depths of tomorrow Acceptance is a true honor, I Feel like the game ain't talked enough about change Since the death of Tupac, a single voice amongst all the hippity hoop blabber And that's the way that it goes, I guess Never would expect that we'd all forget to accept The fact that under that American Eagle's infinite wingspan We're all illegal immigrants, think man Just take a look at the old history book It's no mystery, misery took a hold of so many lives Controlled each of their eyes The way we look at one another like We aren't the same, I'm angry and need someone to blame We wanna be free to express our opinions We wanna be safe in our own neighborhood We wanna have hope that the world will accept us We wanna be understood It's all perspective and it's not perplexive if you Just take a look at the media, see the uh, recurring cases of white on black crime Like that's the only violence that's deserving attention All that I hear is silence when other versions are mentioned Like black on black, white on white, it's the lifelong fight For the lack of understanding we all yearn for acceptance For the lack of understanding we all yearn for acceptance mm. Yeah Sophia Calder blessing the vocals. Jackson on the beat. And yours truly rocking the mic. Let's go. Mm. Come on. I'm going to read you a poem by the black boy that said that he thinks he was supposed to be white. It's called, I am who I am. Walking through the hallways, I see no one like me. My eyes like the sight of color. Color girls, color boys. Being out of place buzzes in my head like a bee. I can't be like everyone else, filled with joy. I'm struggling with accepting my own culture. Grandma's advice floats in my head like a bee. I am who I am. I nibble off pieces of this advice. Yet, shame stares at me in the mirror, and I'm losing my patience. Face up, be proud. I will be proud for who I am. Now I'll be happy with who I am. Loving myself is the most important. Don't dwell on my appearance, because that's the most unimportant. I am who I am, and nothing will change about that. So, if I was in the audience, I would be thinking, who cares? That doesn't happen. It doesn't affect me, right? Or I would be thinking, do, do those things really happen? I feel like those kids made up those things. But when I see that these comments that are microaggression affects my family, my best friends, and strangers, especially me, I think, ouch, did you really mean that? I just think, do you really know me for me? Do you know Nye Davis? Or do you just see me as another stereotype? Because that's not who I am. I am Nye Davis. Thank you. <laughs> 